Hello, I'm Mark with the Trimble mobile mapping support team. Welcome to this Trimble MX Asset Modeler demo video. In this video, I will show how to bring MX9 data into the TMX software, open a mobile mapping view, navigate in the views, and perform a few measurements. If you have downloaded the MX9 demo data, please make sure that you have extracted all of the files from the zip file before getting started. I'll begin with the TMX software already opened. To Import the MX9 demo data. First start by selecting the procedures button in the lower left corner. Expand the mobile mapping group and then in the list select add run. Use the browse icon to browse to the folder on your computer that contains the run data. Select the OMR file followed by the open button. To add the run to the view, select the add run button, and then finally select the square icon to finish the procedure. The run is displayed in the map 2D view along with a Bing Maps base layer. There is an aerial layer that is available by selecting the toggle next to its entry in the legend. There is also an aerial label. However, these Bing map layers use computer resources. So for performance purposes, I will deactivate all of the display of the Bing maps layers. I'll zoom into the map 2D view by spinning the wheel on the mouse. The map 2D view shows the camera positions along the trajectory. The blue triangles represent the forward looking and back down camera positions. The red dots represent the panoramic image positions. To open a mobile mapping view, first select the mobile mapping view tab, followed by open view. And I will click on the image for one of these camera positions and the image is displayed. It's possible to open more than one view. So with the open view icon still active, I will click on a panoramic camera position, just a couple of positions to the north, and I can display two images at the same time. To close an image in the mobile mapping view, simply hover over its view icon and then select the X button. To navigate in the mobile mapping view, zoom in and out by spinning the wheel on the mouse. To pan around, press and hold the right mouse button as you move the mouse. The blue disks that are visible in the mobile mapping view represent other camera positions. You can jump to another camera position simply by selecting a disk. Pressing the page up and page down keys on the keyboard will navigate through the trajectory, moving two images at a time. In the mobile mapping view, there is an icon that will show the point cloud. The icon just above it changes the display of the point cloud in the mobile mapping view. To display the point cloud in the map 2D view, check the box next to the point cloud layer in the legend. Point cloud data, however, is best viewed in a map 3D view. So I will select the map 3D tab, and then I will spin the wheel on the mouse to zoom in a little closer to the intersection. Point clouds are best displayed against a darker background. You can change the background color of a map display by using its icon in the upper left. To pan in a map 3D view, simply hold down the right mouse button and move the mouse. To rotate the view, hold the left mouse button as you move the mouse. To restore to a top-down view, select the top-down view icon in the compass rows. I will now demonstrate some measurement functions available in TMX. Measurements can be made in either the map 2D, map 3D, or mobile mapping views. To access the measure functions, select the measure icon at the top. Measurements using the point cloud are best made using a 3D measure technique, which can be set by selecting measure preferences at the top of the dialog. Under measure techniques, select 3D measurement and then close the dialog. Point measurement functions are accessible by expanding the point group. The first icon on the top row to the left is the single point. And this icon can be used to collect, for example, a point at the base of a pole. So I will turn off the display of the point cloud in the mobile mapping view and perhaps navigate the view a little closer to this pole. And to measure the location at the base of this pole, I simply click once. 
When a single point measurement has been made, its coordinate information is displayed in the dialog. The yellow disk that appears with the cursor in a view indicates that the point cloud is being detected even if its display has been turned off. The next measurement that I would like to show is the point height to a horizontal plane, which is the fourth icon from the left. This two-click measurement provides the distance between a point and a horizontal reference. I'll navigate the mobile mapping view closer to the intersection to show this measurement using a traffic signal. I'll select the icon and I want to measure the bottom of this traffic signal. So the first measurement is on the ground below the signal and then the second measurement, the second click is at the bottom of the traffic signal. The measurement has been made on the bottom of the traffic signal and the distance to the ground is displayed. The icon just to the right is the point drop to horizontal reference plane. I will select it and this measurement function drops the point to the ground. The first click should be on the ground below the signal. The second click is on the bottom of the traffic signal. The point is placed on the ground and the distance between the ground and the signal is displayed. Line measurements are available by expanding the line group. The first icon on the left top row is a free line and this icon allows you to digitize a line anywhere in a view. To finish digitizing a line, simply double click to end the digitizing process. After the line measurement has been made, its length is displayed in the view and in the dialog along with some additional lengths. The icon just to the right is a one-click ridge measurement, which can be useful for measuring the street curb and gutter. This semi-automatic measurement function works better with some modification to the measurement preferences. Select the measurement preferences at the top of the dialog. Select point cloud closest point, followed by point cloud ridges and corners. Under query parameters, set the minimum search radius to 10 and move the minimum number of points slider to approximately 15. Close the dialog and I will select the ridge with one point icon and I will navigate to a different area in, this, uh, in these runs. So I will close the current mobile mapping view, select the open view button, and then in the north part of the run up here, I will select a panoramic image to open. In the mobile mapping view, I can see that there is a curb on the street. So when I hover the cursor near the curb, I will see that it will change shape, indicating a ridge has been detected with one click. A line is digitized as far as it is detected in the point cloud. Another useful linear measurement is a semi-automated road mark measurement. This two-click measurement allows you to measure road markings using intensity values in the point cloud. Its icon is in the middle of the top row. Before I use this measurement, I need to set the measure technique back to 3D measurement in the measure preferences. I select its icon and for this measurement, I will make it in the map 3D view. I will use the road stripes that are nearby. So I will navigate in the map 3D view to a set of road markings. And the way that this measurement works is the first click is at the end of a road marking. The second click is on the line in the direction you want the software to detect the line. After the second click, the road marking has been digitized. To digitize an arc, use the arc with three point measurements. Uh, I will show this in the mobile mapping view. Um, I don't have a feature that is really an arc. So what I'll do is I'll go a few stations back and I have a round sign uh, here I, I can use to demonstrate this. So with an arc, the first two clicks are in the endpoints of the arc. And then the third click is somewhere on the arc to complete the measurement. Polygon measurements are available by expanding the area group. The first icon on the left is a freeform polygon measurement. I'll demonstrate this function by digitizing some solar panels on a building. I'll set the map 3D view to a top-down view. 
at the southwest corner of the intersection is a building with some solar panels on a roof. I can open a mobile mapping view to this location by selecting the open view icon and then selecting in front of the building. I position the mobile mapping view to a building with some solar panels. And now if I select the free area icon, I am able to start digitizing the corners of this solar panel that is on the top of this building. Double click to digitize the last point and stop the polygon measurement. The area of the polygon is displayed in the view as well as in the measure dialog along with some other measurements. The third icon from the left is the vertical rectangular area with two points measurement. A utility box that was seen earlier in the north and south oriented run can be used to demonstrate this type of measurement since it has a flat side that is perpendicular to the ground. I'll navigate to that area by first closing the current mobile mapping view and then in the map 3D view I will pan up, select the open view button and then select a panoramic image near the utility box. I select the vertical rectangular area with two points icon and the first point I will digitize will be the lower right corner followed by a second point on the upper left corner and the front face of this utility box has been measured. A similar measurement for a horizontal area can be made using the horizontal rectangular area measurement function. I can use a nearby road marking to demonstrate this type of measurement since it is oriented parallel to the ground. I select its icon and this three click feature is measured on the corners of this rectangle. So I will click once, I will click twice, and then I will click a third time to complete the measurement. Keep in mind that in a production environment, these measurements can be saved with various attributes and exported from the TMX software in different formats. Before I go, I can close this run by selecting close run in the procedures list. To work with this run again, select open run, select the run in the list and select the open run button. I will close the run again to show one more function. To remove a run from the TMX software, select Remove Run, select the run in the list, and select the Remove button. Removing a run does not actually delete the data from the computer, but it is simply removed from the list of available runs. Thank you for watching this demonstration of the Trimble MX Asset Modeler software. If you want to know more about the software, please contact your Trimble Sales representative or dealer for further information. Cheers!